If you want to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is on Instagram. If you just want to say what up, if you want to tell me you love my videos, you can tell me that you hate my videos, but the best way to do that is on Instagram. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Wack 100 says he ain't mad at 6 9 and Nicki Minaj seems like she's about to drop a new album, even though she just said she was retiring. Plus, Gucci Mane talks about his issues with Young Thug. Let's talk hip hop. Hey, listen, I gotta speak on this. Anybody talking about 6 9 is $10 million deal. First of all, that's some internet shit. Ain't nobody seen no paperwork. Second of all, hey, listen, whatever these people wanna do with their money, whatever they wanna invest in, <clears throat> that's their business. That's their right. Third, stop blaming him. It's his fans. He got his fan base. His fan base make him popular. The popularity brings strings. The strings bring revenue. Any businessman would do business with this kid. Y'all keep, y'all keep uh, crossing the streets with the building. And the building don't gotta buy by the code of the streets. So all you niggas run around here crying and mad, man, go, go step your game up and go figure out something. Go find you a youngster to push or do something. Stop crying, man, about business and what business is. That's just what it is. It's 2019, man. It ain't 1989 no more. Wes. All right, so that's Wack 100, right? And you know he's the game's manager, and he's also Blueface's manager, right? Um, he works with Cash Money or Cash Money West, right? Um, he's a big blood OG, triple OG, and basically he's talking about 6 9 right? So here's my whole thing, right? Wack 100 has a little bit of beef with YG, right? And Blueface has a little bit of beef with... 6 9 it ain't real beef, it's industry beef, right? Um, but anyway, so WAC 100, I would think that he would have a whole different take on this, right? Um, but WAC 100 is speaking straight facts at the same time. So when I think about WAC 100 and just what he represents and his persona, if somebody asked him about 6 9 I would think he would say, you know, fuck that bitch ass snitch ass nigga, 6 9 ine can not come around here, right? That's what I would think the energy would be. But it wasn't, right? And also nobody asked him, but he basically was like, Yo, talking about 6 9s 10 million dollar deal that was announced last week, basically saying, look, that's just some internet shit, so we don't even know really if uh, 6 9 is going to be signing a 10 million dollar deal or not, or has signed a 10 million dollar deal or not, right? So first of all, he was like, so y'all speaking on something that you don't really know about, but even if he did sign a 10 million dollar deal why is everybody bitching and complaining and moaning and getting upset right and so for me i'm thinking that people are getting upset because they're mad that a snitch is getting a 10 million dollar deal it's almost like he's being rewarded for taking down nine trey right whereas whack 100 is saying that yo can you blame him right and at the on the on the same hand he's super popular right uh he is uh the popularity will bring streams right the streams will bring revenue right and so why would a record deal a record label decide not to work with him if they invest a uh, uh, 10 million dollars in him he's probably gonna make that record label a hundred million dollars so that's pennies comp to the dollar literally compared to what he's going to make for those guys so he, they might as well do it right he was saying that you would be a fool if if you were a businessman if you didn't want to get into business with 6 9 right um, as far as streaming and that kind of things go right as far as like if 6 9 wants to come to your establishment and do a show if I was a businessman I'd be like hell nah you can't come to my establishment and do a show because everybody's gonna be trying to get your ass you know what I'm saying or it could almost be like the president is here and you know he 6 9 will have mass security but right? we don't know until 6 9 gets out right um, but he was just saying that people are confusing the streets with the building, right? You keep crossing the streets with the building, right? Where basically you confuse the streets with the industry, right? Uh, and in the streets, yeah, there's codes and guidelines and rules that we obey, but in the industry, if you're popular and if that can bring some revenue dollars and if that could bring some streaming, that's what they care about. It's business is what, what WAC 100 was basically saying, right? Um, and I get it. And it's funny because WAC 100 has that duality, right? Because on one end of the spectrum, yes, Yes, he is a gang member yes he is involved with the gangs and yes he completely understands and knows gang culture but on the other side of the spectrum he is definitely a businessman as well he is a manager he is in the hip-hop industry so he kind of plays both sides of the fence right and it's just very interesting to see like whack 100's take on this whole thing right 
Um, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. And you've teased a little bit about the five fifth thing thing. Is it is that the title? We don't know. We don't know. Okay, so what is going oh on? God, when my fans are get... gonna love you. First of all, I just want to let you know. I my went fans deep. are gonna love you. No, um, the fans, I am speaking from the fans. Oh. What's going on, Nikki? When's this music coming? The thing is, uh, I'm always working, but I just don't know if I wanna technically come out of my Twitter retirement okay. just yet. Okay. So I'm working and I'm working. And what I, if I do put out the fifth thing thing, it's gonna be iconic and insane. Yeah. But I don't know yet. Next level Nikki is like what I like to call that. Yes. Now. All right, so Entertainment Tonight caught up with Nicki Minaj, right? And I got to say, yo, I know like sometimes people be watching my shit, they be like, yo, he be going in on Nicki sometimes. But Nicki is my favorite female rapper, right? In my top five, like, and I'm just not talking about top five female rappers, I'm just talking about five, top five rappers of all time. Uh, Nicki Minaj is there, right? And she's the only female rapper that's there, right? Um, I love Nicki Minaj, right? And I love her music, and maybe that's why sometimes it seems like I'm going a little bit hard on her because I just want her to be the best right same thing with dmx and a few other people too but whatever right um so anyway the entertainment tonight caught up with Nicki minaj and Nicki minaj is killing me yo because this is the thing right she comes out she's like oh i'm retiring oh i'm trying to have a baby right and for me i really thought that Nicki minaj was definitely gonna retire and just have a baby and focus on family life and focus on you know chilling with her husband right um but she has that kind of personality that she can't really do it, right? So she goes and does an interview with Joe Button, right? Then she has Joe Button do an interview with her. Then she drops a single, right? Megatron. And she's on one of Trina's singles, that Project Chick joint, right? So I'm like, all of this seems like she's gearing up to drop an album, but every time she opens up her mouth, she says, yo, I'm retiring, yo, I'm done with rap, at least for now, right? Then I went back and I saw this old interview with Nicki Minaj on MTV talking about how she wants to come out with four albums and then she wants to quit rap and then have a baby and then come back out with a fifth album and be a mother on that album and talk about how it feels to be a parent and just basically approach hip hop from a different perspective, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. This is what Nicki Minaj is gonna do because this is the exact plan that she had since day one, right? Um and I just chilled back, I fell back. I even said to myself, hey, it will be stingy for me to be like, yo, Nikki, we need another album when she just wants to tend to her personal life. Any real fan that really loves an artist would be like, I get it, you're a human, you gotta chill and do your thing, right? But Nicki Minaj ain't chilling and doing her thing, right? So they ask her about the fifth thing thing, which I guess is supposed to be the name of the new album, right? And that's the fifth album. And she's like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure yet, but you know, I wanna see if I come out of my Twitter retirement first of all she does one of these twitter retirement and then you what you retired from twitter i thought you retired from hip-hop completely now it's just a twitter retirement like yo stop playing nikki and one of my mans like one of my homeboys right and shout out to sid because he did say to me he did say it right that nikki minaj dropping an album before the end of the year 2019 he said it right and i'm like no nah, i know she ain't man she says she retiring yeah i think she'll probably come out with another album but not for like another two years from now now, when her baby is walking and all that but it seems like Nikki's about to drop an album right now you know what I'm saying which is crazy but um we'll have to see what happens Nicki Minaj is very confusing but uh this is the latest that she's saying that she might come out of her Twitter retirement so we'll have to see man uh let me know what y'all think about this in the comments Yo, so it's 1017, right? And anybody who is anybody in hip hop knows that 1017 is like the day that Gucci Mane like drops his albums and stuff like that, right? So October 17th, true to form, yo, Gucci Mane is about to drop an album tonight, right? Well, October 2. And he kind of says it's more like a mixtape than an album because he's not saying it's like an overall theme, but it's like a collection of the 13 most recent songs that he has based on like the last month or two, right? He says that it's nothing for him to crank out an album. He could bust an album out in like two days. So he's basically giving us the newest version of Gucci Mane that he has to offer, right? Um, 
And he said this on Everyday Struggle because he was on Everyday Struggle with academics Wayno and Nadeska, and this was so dope, right? So this morning, he's talking to them, he's sitting down, he talks to them about a lot, right? So he talks to them about the Angela Yee thing, and basically they were asking him, like, were you really banned from The Breakfast Club? Um, and he says, well, it, they didn't say that, yo, Gucci, you banned, but every time that his record label tried to reach out to get him an interview on The Breakfast Club, they would deny it, deny it, deny it. So he figures that, you know, they were he was banned without them formally just saying, hey, Gucci Man is banned from here, right? But then he also says that he is going to be going up to The Breakfast Club pretty soon, right? And I'm thinking that he's probably going to go on The Breakfast Club like either today or tomorrow, right? He might wait until tomorrow, 10, 18, after the album drops tonight at midnight, right? Because tomorrow is Friday. Uh, today is Thursday and it's 10, 17, and nobody drops albums on Thursdays, but people usually drop their album on Friday, so that's when the album is actually really dropping, right? He also said that nobody likes to be embarrassed, right? That he kind of made Angela Yee feel a little bit uncomfortable um, and she kind of felt embarrassed, right? And for y'all that don't know what happened, basically he was like, yo, wasn't you the one that was at my hotel and trying to get into the door and get into the room and calling me and acting all crazy after that one interview we had? And Angela Yee said, no, that wasn't me. She was like, you must be talking about some other girl or whatever like that. Um, and of course, Angela Yee don't want to seem like a groupie, especially for rappers, especially if she's in the kind of work that she is. Um, but I don't know, man. I kind of tend to believe Gucci Man. Now, Gucci Man has went off and said some crazy stuff about certain females, but this one I kind of do believe, right? Um, and it's no shade. I mean, Angela Yee, if she's single, she could want to crush on Gucci or whatever, right? Like, you know what? Whatever, right? So, Anyway, Gucci Man also talked about um, his issues with Young Thug, right? So basically, he was talking about how, um, you know, you, academics kind of asked him, like, I saw that you and Young Thug kind of had a little exchange on Twitter, and he was trying to ask him, like, what's all that about, right? So the whole thing is that, y'all, I don't know if y'all remember, but right when Gucci Man first came out of jail, uh, not first came out in the industry, but when he first came out of jail recently, which was probably about two years ago, maybe three years ago um he was like really hype and he wanted to uh do a project to get well he didn't want to do the project but he wanted young thug and rich homie kwan to do a project together right because gucci man was basically like yo i want i'll put a million dollars down for rich homie kwan and young thug to do a project right um and then gucci man was locked up so he didn't really know like what happened between young thug and rich homie kwan and why they stopped talking or why they stopped chilling or why they stopped being cool so he was just kind of saying like he loves the music Music, right he thinks rich homie kwan is dope he thinks young thug is dope a legend in the making uh he's the one that brought young thug into the rap game anyway you know way back in the day like 2012 ish or whatever the case may be so gucci man was like i want to see these two men together right um and then you know you get a response from young thug that's like yo remember when young thug was like on twitter like gucci man don't forget who set you up when you first came home right and then gucci man was like all right cool you know he kind of just left it alone right and Gucci Man kind of explained that, you know, especially over social media, even if you have good intentions and if you're trying to just make things like better between you know, two artists, or even if you want to shout out like an artist, they might take that offensively, right? Um, and he says, you know, like, let's say you you say, yo, Young Thug, he wasn't saying Young Thug's name specifically, but he's like, let's say that you're like, yo, man, I remember when you was, you know, when you first came in the game, and now look at you, when he's just kind of basically expressing that he's proud of somebody, uh, but they could take it as a diss or a jab because you're trying to like little bro me, or you're trying to son me, you're trying to basically be like, yo, when I was rich and a millionaire, you wasn't shit you know what i'm saying um and so he said that even if he wants to congratulate somebody he kind of you know stopped doing that on social media because it could be taken the wrong way from that person right um but that's all industry stuff right and also i think personally that kind of means that that person is not secure within themselves like everybody unless you're like stormy you know kylie jenner's daughter or unless you're like jaden smith or something like that you know uh will smith's son you know everybody is born 
you know, and everybody was broke once upon a time, right? So yeah, you rich now, but you might have been broke before, right? So it's okay to admit like, yeah, yo, I remember when I was struggling and blah, 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 but now I'm not. Now I'm a millionaire, just like the rest of y'all, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, some rappers take offense to that when you remind the general public about what all of that is, right? So basically he was just saying that kind of him and uh, Young Thug had a little misunderstanding on social media uh, between, you know, him him, you know saying he got a million dollars for the rich homie Quan project with young Doug and of course him saying like yo I'm so proud of you I remember when you was young or whatever like that um, but anyway that him and young Doug are cool um, and that he thinks that young Doug is dope he loves young Doug's music and that's like his man's you know forever you know what I mean um, which is cool you know what I'm saying it's good to see that like he ain't really beefing beefing like young Doug and nothing like that and he looks at him as like a brother right he also said that he's considering like doing something else with future which would be crazy free bricks like part two with future which would be ill right and he said if i do free bricks part two i gotta do it with future right so i think that this is gonna be dope he talked about you know his frequency of coming out with music he says like coming out with a lot of music all the time helps you get practice in the studio helps you get practice during interviews helps you have equity and and and, and you know intellectual property to bring to the record label and say yo I got all this right if you come out with a project once every 12 months or if you come out with 12 projects in a year you know the 12 projects in a year you can be like the record label look at all this I got you know what I'm saying uh, which all makes sense right it's it's called consistency, right? Um, so all this was dope, man. Y'all should check out the interview. Uh, let me know what y'all think about this and everything else in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And follow me at Johnny Fastlane on Instagram. Y'all already know what to do. Peace.